JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, three women shot, one fatally, at Bingo Game in Clarendon. Three women were shot, one fatally, during an attack at a Bingo Game at Bottom House Hall in Hayes, Clarendon, on Wednesday. The deceased has been identified as 37-year-old Tara Fullerton, otherwise called Doll, a resident of the community. The injured women, both 52, have been admitted to hospital. Reports received are that around 5.30 p.m., the three females were among the persons gathered at a shop playing bingo. Police said a silver Nissan Tida motor car drove up at the location, and one man alighted from the vehicle armed with a handgun. The man reportedly opened gunfire, hitting all three women. They were assisted to hospital, where Fullerton was pronounced dead on arrival. The other two were being treated for gunshot wounds to various parts of their bodies. Police were unable to say what triggered the attack, but have launched an investigation. No suspects have yet to be identified. Cop intervenes, shoots man during knife attack in St. Mary. A policeman's intervention might have saved a life following an incident on Main Street in Anotter Bay, St. Mary, on Tuesday night. Information received is that around 9 p.m., a detective sergeant went to the location and saw two men arguing. One of the men, later discovered to be 19 years old, reportedly stabbed the other, a 23-year-old Higgler. The man was allegedly about to stab the Higgler again when the cop intervened and ordered him to drop the weapon. He reportedly refused and the policeman, to prevent further harm, pulled his license firm and discharged one round, hitting the man in the thigh. He fell and the cop retrieved the knife. Both wounded men have since been admitted to the hospital. Suspected robber shot and injured on Olympic Way. A suspected robber was shot and injured by the police in the vicinity of Dew Point Primary School on Olympic Way in Kingston on Thursday morning. Reports were that two men tried to rob a wholesale when they were challenged by a police officer in the vicinity. The men then allegedly fired at the police who returned fire, hitting one of the robbers. The other escaped. A gun was recovered in the process. The St. Andrew South Police are investigating. Man arrested after gun found under banana tree in St. Mary. A man was arrested after a gun and several rounds of ammunition were found under banana tree in Itaburel, a not in St. Mary on Wednesday. Reports are that about 12.30 p.m. Lawmen conducted a targeted raid of the area when Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol with a magazine loaded with 11 9mm rounds of ammunition was found hidden under a banana tree. The accused identity has been withheld pending further investigations. Suspected lottery scammer charge after police operation in St. James. A suspected lottery scammer was arrested on charge following a joint operation by the Lotto Scam Task Force and the Air One Special Operations in Barrytown, St. James on Thursday morning. Charges ran dispense 37, otherwise called Brown Man, a mechanic of the community. Reports are that between the hours of 5 a.m. and 8 a.m., the teams went in search of persons suspected to be involved in lottery scamming. In the process, two motor vehicles, a BMW and a Toyota Nova were seized during the operation. It is believed that the motor vehicles were purchased with proceeds of illegal means. Three listed as persons of interest in St. James. Three men have been listed as persons of interest in the investigations of two double murders that rocked St. James this week. According to Senior Superintendent of Police, SSP Vernon Ellis, on Monday afternoon, two men were shot and killed in the vicinity of Crawford Street in Mount Salem. Another man was injured during the daring daylight attack. Two days later, gunmen struck again in the rural community of Canaan, Adelphi. Tevin Lawson, O.C. Brocken, is a person of interest in the double murder that took place on Crawford Street on Monday of this week. Lester Gallimore, O.C. Zado, is a person of interest in the double murder that took place in Canaan, Adelphi, yesterday morning. Jadine Henry of Canaan, you are a person of interest in the double murder that took place in Canaan District yesterday. You are to turn yourself into the police at Freeport by 12 midday on the 11th of May 2023. The investigative teams are working assiduously to put these cases together, SSB Alice said. The cases of high solvability factors. The operational teams that are out there, they are relentlessly pursuing those persons of interest and where there is gang conflict, ensuring that we hold the opposing sides at bay, he added. 
SSP Ellis further said that while there has been a 40% reduction in murder in the parish, the St. James Police are pushing to create a safer environment for citizens. The operation teams are pushing. In 72 hours, we recovered three legal farms, one of which resulted in a fatal confrontation. Even though we are seeing a 40% reduction across the board for major crimes, we are still not satisfied with the incidence of murders, he said. We have seen 34 less persons being killed and 31 less persons being shot since the start of the year. However, we want to see the incidence of both murders and shootings continue to go down in the direction that it is going, the senior cop added. He pointed out that the support of citizens is vital in helping to solve these investigations. We have a balanced approach going forward. We're asking the citizens who have useful information to continue to support the police department in putting these cases together. And we'll continue to pursue those who are hell-bent on creating that type of meme in the society, SSP Ellis said. Manchester residents fearful as women being targeted in house break-ins. Residents of Don Robin and Balvini Heights in Mandeville, Manchester are fearful following reports of breaking and entering at the homes of women and the sexual assault of a woman in the era last week. According to the residents, over the last three weeks, armed men have been preying on vulnerable women in the communities. One robbery victim requested not to be named said she was robbed of cell phones, cash and other items by two men who broke into her house last week. I thought that with the grill I was safe. Them cut the grill and them come in so fast. Them took out the meter. So to me, it doesn't matter what house you're in, you're not safe. And the hours that they're coming in is when the neighborhood is dead, no sound. Then coming at the hours and people are deep in them sleep. That is the time they're attacking, she lamented. Fred Williams, a justice of the peace and community member, said he has been providing counseling to the victims. Williams suggested the establishment of more neighborhood watches and citizens associations to help reduce these incidents. Last July, a series of similar incidents occurred in the neighboring communities of Hatfield and Obton. There was one reported victim of rape, while others reported being robbed of personal and household belongings. According to the latest crime statistics, Manchester has recorded 29 robberies and 53 break-ins since the start of the year. Man accused of beating mother of his child at clinic, a man who was accused of beating the mother of his child at a medical facility in St. James, was dragged before the parish court on Wednesday. The defendant has been scheduled to reappear in court on May 18, where the complainant is expected to be present, in order to facilitate further determination of the matter. Stephen Clark, who is facing charges of assault, occasioning bodily harm and unlawful wounding, had his bail extended when he appeared in court on Wednesday. The allegations are that on March 9, the complainant took the couple's child to a medical appointment at a clinic in Montego Bay and was about to leave when Clark accosted her. When the complainant saw Clark, she reportedly tried to run back into the clinic, but he grabbed her and asked, Why have a man a hold me pitney? before allegedly punching her in the face and tripping her to the ground, causing her to cut her knee. Clark then allegedly continued punching the woman before other persons intervened. The police were summoned and under caution, Clark reportedly said, A long time thing this, can't talk to her. He was arrested on charge. During the proceedings, presiding parish judge Sasha Marie Smith Ashley made an order requesting that the prosecution contact the complainant who was not present in order to ascertain the appropriate measures to be taken in advancing the case. The judge also vacated an order for a warrant, which had previously been issued for Clark's arrest due to his failure to appear in a previous court date. The complainant should be here so we can decide the way forward. The complainant is to be contacted to attend court, Judge Smith actually said, as she scheduled the case for May 18. Manager of UK charity group among two Brits held for drugs at Montego Bay Airport, say cops. The manager for UK charity organization was one of two British residents allegedly held with illegal drugs in separate incidents at the Sangston International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James, yesterday. The woman, who lives in London, England, was detained after 2.5 pounds of cocaine was allegedly found in a box of patties she had. Police reported that about 6.40 p.m., the woman checked in at the airport for a Virgin Atlantic flight to London Heathrow when her carry-on suitcase was searched at the security checkpoint. A box of tasty patties she had was reportedly found with three packages containing a white powdery substance believed to be cocaine. She was arrested on reasonable suspicion of breaches of the Dangerous Drugs Act. The other person detained was a 33-year-old bartender from Tooting in London after cocaine and ganja were allegedly found in his luggage. Police said around 1.20 p.m. Narcotics officers were conducting security checks on a T.O. flight to Birmingham, England 
on the bartender's luggage was searched. Eight rectangular shaped packages, each containing a white powdery substance resembling cocaine, were reportedly found inside. The eight parcels were weighed and totaled approximately 20.5 pounds or 9.3 kilograms. Five ounces of loose ganja was also reportedly found among the eight parcels of cocaine. It was arrested on reasonable suspicion of breaches of the Dangerous Drugs Act. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.